Hello reformers and welcome back to Prophecy of Pendor. Now it is a bit late. <laughs> uh, seems to seems to become a pretty frequent occurrence, isn't it? Anyway, it is a bit late, so I am going to be a little bit quieter than uh, normal. Anyway, what we're going to be doing in this episode is we are going to be fighting Igrim the Devourer. Yes, he is definitely someone that we want to take out, and there's a very good reason why we're doing this, because someone in the comments left an extremely lengthy comment that was very, very helpful, and uh, I'm going to attempt to detail what they said in this episode over the course of us, you know, fighting this fellow. Anyway, the point is, is that the comment detailed a certain strategy and the strategy it incorporates is attempting to reduce your knighthood order units recruiting cost to zero. I actually did not know that this was even possible, but apparently it is. And uh, well, the thing that we need to be able to uh, actually make this happen is to unlock the doom mace for our knighthood order. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the Doom Mace because I haven't defeated Igram the Devourer, so that is exactly why we are now here. Wow, that guy literally just took, he just li literally took 102 damage. That is insanity. Absolute insanity. Okay, so th yeah, we might have some issues here. We might have some issues. I'm gonna tell people to charge in now because uh, I basically, yeah, I, I wanna try and distract these guys as much as we can, but I was hopeful that we would be able to uh, shoot them down before they actually arrived here, but you know how it is. They can very, very quickly gain on you, and then it's... Ah, oh, then it's too late, you know, then it's too late. I mean, I don't really mind. You know, I don't really mind. As long as I am able to retrieve a Doom Mace at the end of this, that would be fantastic for our Knighthood Order. Anyway, uh... Hmm. I've only eliminated 15 of them. I'm a bit worried about this, to be honest. I'm actually going to tell my people to hold position back here, if I can. And maybe... Oh, yeah. Okay, a little bit of damage. Not much, though. All right, so I am actually going to be retreating here. I know. I know. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everything is under control. But basically, what I'm trying to do... Oh, Igrim was killed. He was literally just killed right there. Yes, anyway. <laughs> That's actually not good, because that means we are now disqualified from getting the Qualys gem as far as I'm aware because you can actually get a Qualys gem from the undead minor factions in this version of Pendor because previously you were unable to do anything like that but there is still a quote-unquote capture role behind the scenes and it does actually enable you to have a chance at a Qualys gem so that is definitely something that we want to uh well, be a bit sad about, I guess, because we, we obviously will not be able to get that now because he's dead. Uh, but it's kind of necessary because I kind of wanted to make sure that all our forces were, you know, kind of in a decent enough area. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to attack him from here. Ooh, look at that. that. Oh, okay. He was actually running away from us for a second there. But yes, anyway, basically, it all begins with the Doom Mace. So I'm going to try my best to try and eliminate Igrim. And then once I have unlocked the Doom Mace, what we're going to be doing is up upgrading both of our forces, you know, both of our, uh, you know, knights and our sergeants, and we're going to be upgrading them into utilizing Doom Mace, and we're also going to upgrade our sergeants into using a horse. I was originally not going to do this because I wanted to have a dedicated archer force on the ground, but for this strategy to work that was detailed by the comment, you are going to need some very fast horses indeed for most of your units. And basically, what we are going to be doing then is we're going to be going over to Elecrae. And this is all this is all off the top of my head, by the way, from what I can remember the comment saying. I actually don't have it written down anywhere, so I apologize if I get this somewhat incorrect, but I think most of the details will be accurate. Anyway, the point is, we go to Elecrae. We speak to the guy that gave us the mystical rune plate. If you don't know where we got the mystical rune plate from, he is uh, the guy, uh, what's his name again? Sarend or something? Uh, Sadren? Yeah, that's it. Sadren. And uh, he is the fellow that you want to speak to. And basically you speak to him 
and then you ask him, can I reduce my relation with you to like minus 100 or whatever the case may be? And then he does that for you. And at this point, obviously you're going to have your knighthood order units fully kitted out with doom maces. And then what do you do, you ask? Well, you start fighting a bunch of Noldor. Oh yes, you start fighting a bunch of Noldor. And because your units have the Doom Maces, they are capable of dealing blunt damage, of course. So you are going to be able to take huge amounts of Noldor prisoner. And as a result of this, you will be able to take Noldor Nobles. Noldor Nobles, what, what do they do? Well, every time you release a Noldor Noble, we've seen this in the past in this series. Every time you release one of them, you gain some honor. And, well... <laughs> we need honor, right? We need honor. As far as I'm aware, according to the comment, it says you need 350 honor. I actually have no idea how much I have. I certainly don't have 350. I think I have maybe 200 or something like that. So it would take a total amount of... Well, if it gives you one honor per capture, then it's going to take 150 Noldor nobles captured in the meantime. And of course... You do have to remember as well that if you capture others, you're also able to gain relation with Noldor back, obviously, and you're also able to gain a huge amount of renown as well as money, because you can, of course, sell the Noldor if you want to. So, after you get 350 honor, then you are able to upgrade as many knighthood order units as you want and you're no longer limited by the prestige cost and that is one of the most amazing strategies that i've ever heard of so that's really really cool in my opinion props to you you know the the, the fellow that uh, left that comment very very impressive and uh, I'm actually I'm actually wondering where where that came from. I'm, I'm sure uh, I don't know. I, I've I, I kind of knew about the fact that there is no like honor limit, if you know what I mean. Because usually in regular warband, as far as I can remember at least, there is a limit of about I think it's about 100 or 99 honor or something like that. So that being a thing is obviously you know, very much native based. And, you know, I did know that obviously, you know, the honor is no limit in, in you know, in this, uh, in this particular mod. And, you know, theoretically, I didn't, I didn't, that's the thing. I did not know that you could get free knighthood order units. I mean, technically you do still have to level up the, uh, well, whatever they may be. So theoretically you still need to level up, uh, well, you know, Salian Knights and uh, Salian, you know, Man at Arms, I believe the uh, the biscuits go into. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of different requirements. But if you have a huge contingent, let's say you have a hundred Salian Knights, it's going to take you so many, so many points of prestige to do what you need to do to get a full army out of custom knighthood order units and that's exactly the reason i suppose you you left this comment so i very much appreciate it i uh, i actually appreciate every single you know helpful comment that i receive and this one is amazing wow crazy absolutely crazy and i i hopefully will be able to pull it off i mean you can see here that we are already doing a pretty fantastic job of eliminating most of the enemies and uh, this is also something that you, uh, you you said in the comment that you could basically that we could do that we could actually do this so I'm pretty happy about that because I've always been a bit scared of Igrim to be honest because Igrim usually is he's harsh you know he's harsh he's really really powerful I mean technically he's not not super offensive minded but he just has so much HP that he is able to stick around in the battle and do serious damage that way. But, uh, yeah. Pretty happy. Pretty happy with how this is going so far. And I believe we've actually... Wow. We've actually survived. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I, I, I don't know whether I can. I don't know whether I can. Oh, yeah. I, I, I should actually remember to be a little bit quiet, shouldn't I? Oh. Oh. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> it's late at night. 
neighbors and everything. Oh, that's, oh yeah, it's not very good. Okay, anyway, 69. Uh, renown. Yes, let's not, let's not do that. Anyway, uh, yes, 463. Fantastic. Really nice. And uh, yeah, the renowned value. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we did not defeat the entirety of Igrim. I actually thought that we did, but okay, that's fine. I mean, I know that you can look up at the top right and you can see that little bar there. And the red, I know, does indicate how many units are remaining. But uh, generally, I don't tend to look up there because I'm, I'm tending to look a little bit more at what I'm actually doing and, and things like that. Anyway, I'm actually going to try and shoot a couple of people now and see if I can... Ooh, nice! We actually dealt some damage from far distance. That is really cool. I always have a great amount of satisfaction in being able to land a hit like that, even though it's 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 pure luck. I mean, you know, it's pure luck. There's no way that you can uh, accurately hit units from this range, not not without a lot of practice at the very least. But uh, yeah, it's it's always really really fun to see whether you're able to actually get some. Oh, look at that! Get some headshots. Speaking of headshots, from such a far distance. It's really, really fun to see that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we will be able to... Well, <laughs> I say hopefully, but our guys are really powerful. Our guys are really powerful. They they have some pretty pretty nice proficiencies as well. Their proficiency... I, I believe I actually mentioned my proficiency. I think someone actually asked about my proficiencies. But I think, my, I, I, think I mentioned in a previous episode that they have... Uh, the knights have, like... I think 300 and something. I'm not sure. I think they. Uh, how much does Lethal Diren have? Because if he, because he's the one that's been training them mostly. And then I sent. Uh, I think I sent. Who was it? Sir Jocelyn. I think once, as well. Uh, even though that was probably not the best idea, because I, I originally thought that I might make them use crossbows. But then I thought to myself, nah, I, I, I think I'd much prefer to have them be high DPS units rather than sustained damage units and uh, DPS what what's DPS well it's, it's damage per second if you don't if you don't know but uh, yeah anyway the point is uh, kind of prefer the fast paced firing of our archers here they're able to do so much damage and uh, yeah uh, obviously our biscuits I think our biscuits don't have that much in in terms of proficiencies I think they have 250 probably, so you can kind of imagine that the knights have maybe close closer to 400 than closer to 300, so yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's, that's basically it. I, I think I mentioned it a little bit more in detail beforehand, but uh, yeah. Anyway, hopefully we will be able to achieve victory here, and uh, well, yeah, I say hopefully. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a foregone conclusion here, but that does mean that we will be able to take a look at our knighthood order a little bit closer and we will be able to go into uh, into the equipment screen and see if we can do a little bit of something about customizing them and giving them doom maces now the main thing that we have to consider here is the fact that my biscuits they currently don't have mounts and I'm not entirely sure if they have any riding skill I think they do but there you go as you can see the secrets are making netherworld shield and Doom Mace are now known to the Knighthood Orders. Fantastic. That's really, really cool. I'm actually wondering whether they have a... No. They don't have a... Doom Mace here. I was actually hoping that there might be a Doom Mace, but I think because we killed Igrim so soon, I think he probably would have had the greatest chance to, you know, to actually drop it. So it would have been really nice. But unfortunately, no. That, that's just not, not a thing that was going to happen. Anyway, they have a huge amount of prisoners to rescue. And this actually makes me a bit sad because I would have very much appreciated getting all of these. But I suppose if we are able to pull off this particular strategy, which I think I might very well do, but I'm going to do most of it off screen, of course, because I don't really want to show you all of the fighting with the Noldor. I might show you the sort of back end of it, if you know what I mean. So I'll show you like when we're just about to get to 350 honor or something like that. Maybe we'll do something about that. But yeah, well, anyway, uh, I can't see any Salian Knights here. I don't think. 
I can see Salian Cavalry. Uh, no, I don't see any of those. So I am actually going to be taking Man at Arms because they are the ones that become my biscuits. So um, that seems to be a pretty good plan. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, so we are actually going to be making our way over to Seven Cross Keep, and then, oh, there we go. We actually, <laughs> we're actually getting an achievement as well. With skill and perseverance, you defeated the hideous heretic army. Despite their strong and evil troops, you will now be known as the Purger of Heresy to the followers of Erida or Sizer, who grudgingly and with gnashing of teeth concede to you plus one strength for your victory. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Seven Cross Keep and we're going to speak to our steward, and he is hopefully going to be able to equip our forces. I think what I'm going to do first is I am going to give my biscuits some mounts. So let's see. They seem to have riding skill five. Yes, I was actually hoping that they might have a little bit higher than that, but apparently their riding skill was stopped a little bit early, perhaps. But anyway, there's a Noldor Grey Warhorse, Dark Warhorse, what's better? Well, this is faster, but it loses a little bit of HP. Uh, yeah, whoa, 44, 44 speed? No, it's 46 speed, so yeah, I, I think the 46 speed one is going to be the best. Um, just wondering whether there's anything else down here that I might want to go for. As far as I am aware, the main thing that we have to consider here is the fact that the comment that uh, one of you so helpfully left detailed the gold leaf, the gold leaf horse. And I think my knights have the gold leaf horse, but the... Uh, the biscuits are obviously not going to get that. So I'm actually going to go and give the Noldor Dark Warhorse to them, I suppose. Alright, it's going to cost 23,000. We have enough to do that. And now we are going to upgrade their weapons. Oh, there's the Doom Mace. Look at that. Oh, that's crazy. That's really nice. Okay, so we're going to be using that. There we go. They are, oh, they're currently using the Goldleaf Warhorse, as you can see right there. They're also using the Noldor Composite Bell, Noldor Arrows, Black Greaves, Pendor Heavy Plate Armor, and so on and so forth. Kraken Shield, fantastic shield. Definitely a good idea to go for that. All right, so there you go. It's only going to take 19 days. That's pretty good, actually. So I suppose what I'm going to do now is, oh yeah, train, train him. Yes, we should probably train our castle steward. Thank you very much. Anyway. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to be, well, just basically waiting waiting here for some time. That's basically what I've been doing the entire time in the uh, in the past, in the, well, recent past, to, uh, you know, level up my knighthood order, or at the very least not to level them up, but to equip them and upgrade them. But uh, I, I'm not entirely sure if I'll do a little bit of, hmm, maybe a little bit of taking of things while that's happening. Tell me. Where would you like to see us go next? Because uh, maybe the Empire could use a little bit of eliminating. We do have obviously the Fierds Vein over here that might require our uh, attention. Savador Castle is still under siege, taking a bit of time to do that. But uh, yeah, otherwise, I thank you very much for watching and for joining me, and I will see you next time.